Let's get it. Let's, Let's go. Let's get it, man. This is Steve and Cedric talking to the band, and I'm Steve. Hey, What's man. happening, Cedric? I'm Cedric. How y'all doing out there? How y'all doing? Man, if you have missed any of our previous episodes, we want to make sure you go to our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to that channel, and make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Cedric, where else can they follow? Oh, find man, us you at, can bro? check us out at Steve and Cedric talking to the number two band. That's on Instagram and Twitter. That's Steve and Cedric talking to the band, the number two, y'all. Check us out. Cedric, we are rocking with the king of Southern Soul. Yes, sir. Big Rob, baby. Big Rob, Rob yeah. Big Rob. Oh my goodness, man! God, God bless y'all, man. Thank, thank you for having me, man. I, I don't think I'm the king, but I'm definitely the best looking fat man in show business. Before me, there was none. After me, there'll be no other like me. Yeah, I know that's yes, right. Big Rob, man, it's an honor to have you, man. How you doing, man? I mean, it's a lot going on in the world, but how you doing, man? Man, brother, I, I'm blessed, man. Thankful, you know what I mean? Grateful, you know. Yes, grateful is the word. That, that's how I'm doing. I'm grateful. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, grateful. I, I, th I think, I think that, I think that, that has a deeper meaning than blessed at this point. You know, what yeah. I mean, just grateful, man. Just I grateful hear you. To be here. Yeah. Great, great, grateful for the opportunity, man, to be able to do something that I love to do and be able to try to make somebody smile. Yes, sir. Man, I love that. I Big love Rob. That. Yes, sir. Yes, Such sir. Such an honor to have you, man. And and uh, I know you got a new project uh, that is coming out real soon. Tell us a little bit about that project. Well, man. well yeah, the, the new album is called Fantastic. It's out. It's the number one album in soul blues music. It's, you know, it's, uh, man, it's all the change. 17, 18 songs on there. And, uh, man, we just having a lot of fun with it. It's, I think, my 27th album in the last two decades. You know, we we try to uh, stay consistent and consistently try to give make good music. And I'm constantly writing and producing and doing shows. But the new album is called Fantastic. And, uh the lead single off of Fantastic is a song called uh, Evidence. If you okay. didn't see me, baby, tell me where's the evidence. If you didn't catch me stroking, <laughs> tell me where's the evidence, baby. Don't 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 listen to what you read on Facebook. Don't and you guys can go to YouTube and type in Big Rob B I G G R O B B Evidence the movie and go watch the music video and see why that woman was putting them razor blades in my food. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Wow. Big Rob, Big Rob. Man. Yes, sir. Steve, Steve, Steve and Cedric. Yes, sir. Steve and Cedric talking to the band, man. That's up. You know, Big Rob, you know, I, I, I'm really not, I got to be honest, man. I'm not really up on my Southern soul. And tell us a little bit, like, what is Southern soul in yeah, comparison to the blues, man? Mm -hmm. Well, Southern soul is like the newborn infant of the blues, but then it's been around. So, you know, you know how they come up with all these different names for stuff, but it's the same stuff. So, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So let me just say this. Do you know who Johnny Taylor is? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Have, so have, you ever heard a song called, have you ever heard a song called Down Home Blue? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. What about what about Candy Liquor by Marvin C? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What what about a record I made with Mel Waiter said, let's go, baby, to the whole where? The and whole the wall. What? And the wall. So yeah. there it is. Yes, sir. That's, yeah. That sound, that, that music, that's what they're calling Southern Soul. So they got names okay. for it. Betty Wright, Clean Up Woman, Tonight is the Night, uh, mm. Denise LaSalle, Trapped, uh, you know what I mean? These, which are just classic records that, that we all know. And so it's, just, mm. it's just a new name for something that's been here, whether you want to call it Southern Soul, Soul Blues. Myself, personally, I call it grown folks music, a juke joint music. On the East Coast, yeah. they call it liquor house music because it's the kind of music that's yes, played. Sir. Brown in the background, liquor. when you go to a place that serves fish and chicken and they fry them both in the Brown same liquor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, let me, sir. Let me I ask, love it. Let me ask you a question, Big Rob. Did, mm -hmm. did, is, did you intend to direct your brand to that style? You know, seeing that you, you know, you come from funk background, uh, about Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, Bootsy Collins, uh, Zap, and all of them. Did you direct it to where it is right now or did it? Did it catch you? God, it God has done it. Uh, you know, as you say, I, I started out as a young DJ as a kid in my neighborhood of Cincinnati, Ohio. And then I was able to meet Boosie Collins and Roger Troutman and all those wonderful people because they're really from my hometown. And then at, when I got old enough to go on the road, I started going on the road and traveling, became a member of the Zap Band. I did that for 25 years. In 1999, we lost Roger and his brother Larry Troutman very tragically. Yeah. And the group, we continued on doing shows and we had to rebuild from the complete bottom. 
in the process of being down in that bottom, God sent me a guy by the name of Mel Waiters who had a record out called Got My Money, Got My Whiskey. Everybody line yes, dancing the song, Got yes, My sir. Money, right? Yeah. And he had just dropped a brand new record called The Hole in the Wall. And I said, hey, man, why don't you let me do a remix, a funked out remix? He said, man, you know, you, you, you come on with it. Let's go with it. So he took me to Malico Records, and uh, which is in Jackson, Mississippi. And I went in the studio, made this Hole in the Wall remix made this big funked out version of it. Like, man, if Roger, like I was trying to be on, I, when I went, I was like, I want to do something that Raj would do, right? Cause I'm yeah. still, you know, I'm hurt, I'm lost. I'm missing my mentor, my teacher, my friend, my boss man. And yeah. so we come out with this super funky version of Hole in the Wall remix. And that introduced me to the soul blues world. And I was able to meet gentlemen like Lil Milton and Tyrone Davis wow. and Frederick wow. Knight and, you know what mm. I mean? Just so many wonderful people and get introduced into that world. And I said, oh man, I kind of like it over here. And so one record kind of led to the next record, to the next record, to the next record. Next thing I knew, I started my group, The Problem Solvers. Then we had a pretty popular song. That was about 2003, 2004. <clears throat> and man, you know, we just threw the whole process and I was still zapping up to probably 2010 or 2011. Really? And by that wow. time, I'd, I'd, I'd had so many hit records in the South. Grown is sexy, good love to make you cry, keep on swinging, uh, the big woman song, mama song, so many records that I will. Vision. Do I continue to keep zapping on and start was my own career? And the guy who was the leader of the band of Zap, Lester Troutman, told me I'd be insane not to get out and at least go and try to see what the Big Rob show would be like. And then Bootsy mm -hmm. Collins' brother, who's like an uncle to me, his name was Catfish Collins, a legendary mm -hmm. guitarist. Yeah. He told yeah. me, he said, he, he said, you've done everything in your life but the Big Rob show, so I think it's time for the Big Rob show. So, hey man, you know, we've been going, going full-fledged for about 15 years now, and it just all kind of fell on me, you know. Um, my, you, uh, go ahead. Did you feel like you was ready for that? Did you feel like it was your time to do that? Not, 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 er not arrogantly. Like I, I would have never left the band. They pretty much kind of like just forced me out of the band. I never told them I quit and they never told me I was fired, but they started uh, making it more and more uncomfortable for me to stay in the situation. <laughs> but it, but, it, but, it, but it, it was love. It was like, you know, like you got a child that grows up and I grew as a kid, I grew up in that zap thing. You got what I'm yeah. saying? As a kid, I've been around there since I was 13 or 14 years old. So uh, they just started making it more and more uncomfortable for me at the same time. My favorite scripture is Romans 8 and 28. It says, for we know all things work together for them who love the yes, Lord sir. and are called according to his purpose. Yes, sir. All things. That means no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through in your day, you step on attack. Well, this, God got a purpose for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it All things. And so it was just time for me to grow and go to the next level. And then, um, hey, man, I, I, I wasn't scared of it. It was just, I was just more so, I didn't want to let the guys in the band down because Cause we had lost people that we love, yeah, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, yeah. in, in, on that journey. So, you know mm -hmm. I mean? I had to carry those caskets of Roger and Larry Trout. And so, you know, when you've been through that with people, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a lot. So I didn't want to let those guys down because I know they depended on me to be there every night at the same time. God started sure. taking these records I was making and uh, started doing miraculous, wonderful things yeah. with them. You yeah. dig? So, yeah. Hey man, I, I'm, I'm thankful for all the opportunity. And one thing is for certain, it is better to be the boss than it is to be the employee. Man, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, you did some gospel stuff, too, man, like uh, with Shirley Murdoch. and. What a, yeah, artists. yeah. You know, we all come out the same fold. You know, yeah, Robert discovered her, discovered me. She was a member yeah. of the Zap Band. She wrote Computer Love. That's her singing on it. Yeah. Roger wrote and produced As We Lay for her. You know what I mean? That's my big mm -hmm. sister. So, you know... I used to be her light man and the road crew guy for her. So that that that's big right. sis. And from my very, very first record, she's always encouraged me to do the best I possibly can do. Matter of fact, give her a special shout out right now. She just made a record with Cupid. Uh, the brother made the Cupid Shuffle. Oh, they got yeah, a new record yeah, called, yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, yeah. They, they got a new record just came out like yesterday called Two Step On Your Haters. Straight. And it's kind of kind of like an inspirational record. And yeah, you know, but surely that's big sis forever. Cool, cool, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my yeah. stuff. Um, go ahead, Man, how did you become a DJ at five years, 
that early, man. How did you? Well, already, yeah, I, I, I wasn't five years old, but but definitely by the time I was ten. Um, man, my oldest cousin, who uh, is actually uh, helps me on the road right now, gave me a tape recorder when I was like four and a half or five years old. I was this energetic kid. When you know the older folks say, I've always I, when I got here, it was like I'd already been here before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm a Jackson Five fanatic. I love the Jackson Five. Yes, Jason sir. For life. And uh, <laughs> man, you don't really like Jackson Five. You just like them. I love. Them. Man, I'll show you a picture I got, man. What, 1971? Yeah. And, and what happened in 1971? Yeah, hey, they, they, they were in concert with Diana Ross well, and the Supremes. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's Diana Ross, man, Diana Ross left the Supremes in 1970, man. Where no, wait a minute. Yeah. It was Diana, Diana Ross and the Supremes, 1971, at the Grand Theater. Hey, look here, man. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, 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 I just want you to know, you man, you know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm Jackson Fire for life. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> look at, look at, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I, I, they, they sit on the table you. at home, you know, I I hear mean, you. The, the records, you know, I, I, you. I got every oh, album, I hear every track, every cassette, I every 45, you. but no. So I wish I had a little bit more time. I broke out my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I, I had to come back. We 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 gonna have a battle uh, a battle of who loves them the most. But uh, you know, what I mean, I, look here. I'm gonna let you out of this easy if you just do one thing. Yeah. Name all the original members of the Jackson Five, and then I'll answer any other questions you got. Oh man, Michael, oh, man. Michael Marlon, Tito, Jackie, Jermaine. Is that five? Randy. Did I get him? Did I get him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, what about what? What about Joseph? It wouldn't have been no Jackson. Well, right, right, Joseph, right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. man, back to my story. So, you know, I started, he gave me a little tape record. I ran around the house wearing my cousin and him trying to act like uh, Ed Bradley at five years old, <laughs> interviewing the family, you know, recording stuff, putting tape record on, play record and leaving it in the room. You know, that what old folks call eavesdropping. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm doing all that, man, just running around. And so I was just an energetic little kid, man, and, and just took a liking to that. And then finally, when I got about 11 and a half, 12 years old, I was able to go to a community radio station in my town, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I joined this program for apprentice and teach you how to actually professionally, like a training program, this black man is set up, Mr. Wow. Tom Knox, he set up a program for uh, people to learn how to be DJs. And and the payoff is once you went through his class, he had a couple of radio stations under his wing that he would let you go actually be on. Straight, wow. And, 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 and that happened for me, bro. And once that happened, all hell broke loose then. You know what I mean? It was, uh, yeah. you know, mess around, you know. I was able to get on the radio and have people uh, call in. And this even before my voice changed. I still sound like a little, I sound like a little girl. <laughs> you know what wow. I mean? And, uh, and uh, but, but going back to that scripture I quoted, the program when I first started in the radio business, I used to have to, we did an oldie show on Friday nights. Yeah. And all we played was like old soul music and all that stuff, right? So, yeah. so as a little bitty guy, I was forced to know who the Dells was, the Dramatics, the Dell Phonics, yeah. the Shy Lights, the Supremes, yes, the Four Tops, Edwin yeah. Starr, yeah. you know? I was forced to learn about all that music, yep. man. The Soul yep. Children, the Sweeter Years, Wow, yeah. Isaac yeah. Hayes, and yes, you know, what I mean, yes, you know, sir. Reggio's yes, Cafe, and yes, sir. Marvin Gaye. What's going on? Yes, so sir. I was forced to know about all that stuff. And so being yeah. a young dude coming up, and that was about the, about the same time, right after Curtis Blow came out with the the break. So this is like 1980, then. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so. What I'm listening to as a young kid at home is one thing, but what I'm doing at the radio station is something totally different. Wow. And and how I say all that works together is because now when I sit in the studio as a songwriter and a record producer, I have a plethora of ideas and a plethora of um, knowledge to draw from. You I know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So so that's a blessing. And then I was forced to learn about jazz. You know what I mean? Not just. You know, Grover Washington, who was phenomenal, but Stanley Turner, yeah. Brown yeah, and McGee, uh, yeah. you know, John Coltrane, Oscar yep. Peterson. Yep. You know, I was forced to learn about folk music, you yep. know what I mean, with Joan Armour trading. There it is. Yeah. Jose Feliciano. Yeah. I was forced yeah. to know about yeah. rock, the yes, Beatles, White Album. You spit and, it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Cream and all yeah. that. I was you forced to know it. about all that stuff. Yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Man. That's what's wow. up. Now, now you did, so, like, you did some I, work with Curtis Blow, right? 
Yeah, yeah, I got him on a song of mine. You know, being a member of the Zap Band, I was, uh, I started early on trying to make music and stuff, even before Roger passed away, you know, got me a little drum machine and would go to a little studio when we were off, which is very rarely, but go off and try to put my little rap songs down or whatever. And so being able to be on the road, I was able to meet a lot of wonderful people and meet all my heroes. And I was like, hey man, I'm making this record. Why don't you come on and get on this record? And, uh, yeah. you know, two people that took me up that I'm forever grateful for, one was Curtis Blow, the other one was uh, Charlie Wilson. I invited wow. both of those guys to get on Big Rob records early on, and they both agreed and, you know what I mean, and did it and said, man, I see where you're trying to go with this. Let me help you. And, and those man. were life-changing moments as well, you know? Good grief, wow. man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's some big names. You playing the instruments, Rob? Man, I dibble and dabble with a little bit of all of it, but uh you know and our own instruments and stuff but not to where i would stand up and say man i'm gonna stand on stage tomorrow and stand up and play the bass or something like that but yeah. i write all the stuff so i can hear all the parts i can hear mm -hmm. all the parts and i direct musicians of how it is i want it to be and uh, i had a good friend of mine his name is emmanuel johnson he's a lead singer of enchantment and i oh, remember yeah. as a young kid yes, coming sir. up and I, I was Gloria. supposed to be around him and he said that he never really wanted to go take formal training because he, if he took the formal training, he was afraid that it may mess with the way that he now hears music. Because, you know, we grew up in the hood, so we grew up yes, uh, watching a guitar player or a bass player or something. You got to feel it. You got to feel yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and the theory, and based upon theory, it may not be right. Like, my son is sitting right here. Right, he's a right. Drummer. And I've <laughs> often heard drummers talk about overhand, underhand, and all these different <laughs> techniques and man, whatever way it make it funky is all that matters. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about, whatever like, way. <laughs> yep. Whatever yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't care what skillet mama make the cornbread in, as long as the cornbread <laughs> tastes good. You dig what I'm saying? But yes, of course, there, that's there. Of course, there are people out there that would say, "Oh man, that's kind of like you know, that's bunking out or whatever." But man, all, the most important thing to me was how you hear it, and I realized that three of my most favorite producers, George Clinton, mm. Norman Whitfield, and Dr. Mm. Dre. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's All great... three of those guys, they were not necessarily classically trained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they knew, that, like, if George couldn't go in there with a classically trained guy like Bernie Warrell. Yeah. You know, he know how to direct Bernie Warrell. Man, I won't. Mm, 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 yep, yep. Then yep. stop. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? And and on Norman Whitfield, I want this record. Whoa! <gasps> yeah. yeah. God. You know what yeah. I mean? And what so, is it good for? Yeah. 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 Hey, man, I'm, I'm I'm just trying to make music that make people feel good and go do shows that make people feel good and get me some toilet paper money and some uh, fried chicken money and some blood That's pressure what's... money. That's what <laughs> you did. That's what I'm what's saying? Up. And, 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 and get, get some for my family, brother. I ain't trying. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I know I'm not, I know I'm not Mozart. And guess oh. what? I, I probably could be. But... Yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm not trying to do all that. I'm just try, I'm trying to make people feel good and make some music that feel, and I understand, let me say this, I understand it, and I understand its purpose being a recording engineer and a song producer, songwriter and record producer. I understand mm -hmm. all the placement of it, yeah. but I'm not getting ready to sit over there all night and try to play a violin, which I may never be good at. I know that's right. But I can right. just go hire a guy who's been practicing all his life, and that's his calling. Boom, boom. So yes. let's, you know, hi hire good people to do the job correctly for you. That's it. Right. So you dig what I'm right. saying? And, that's and, and, it, and, check, and check your ego. Get out your own way. So man. that's the way I would answer that question. Man, nuggets are man. dropping all over the place, man. <laughs> hey, Rob, but tell me this, man, because I, I was checking out your Facebook Live, you know, the other day, man. And I mean, you was really, um, you know, just like going through some samples of your songs, your material. You know, where's this writing coming from? Man, is this real experience? I mean, like, where, where's this writing coming from that you do? Man, all the glory goes to God. It's just one of the gifts that he's given me. And uh, I've been writing songs all my life. You know what I mean? I've been a character all my life. Like, I'm not, you know, like, this is just me. If you find me, you know what I mean? I'm wearing, this is what I wear on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Maybe not the rhinestone glass anymore. But <laughs> I wake up in the morning, put on one blue sock, one green sock. I just hear music <laughs> how I hear. I hear and, you. Uh, you you know, other stuff. So, you know, man, I might be listening to Marvin Gaye saying, wow, man, this song, uh, you know, don't tell me about my father. God is love. I might be listening to that. Save the children. That's my Marvin too, Gaye. Yeah. That'll inspire me. Or yeah. I might be listening to an old Curtis Mayfield joint, or I might be listening to an old Easy E song. Because yeah. the boys in the hood is always hard. You come, you know what I mean? It just, yeah. it, it, they just, they just come yeah. and, 
being over in the soul blues world, you know, we're constantly trying to, you know, come up with the next thing, what's going to be the next lingo and yeah. what's happening. So I just watch people and I see how people uh, respond. And I just try to pay attention to, you know, the greatest thing I can tell you is that Mel Waiters, my good friend who's gone on now, who was a great soul blues artist, told me early on when I first started working, he said, man, you got to know who you're cutting for. You got to know who you're making this music for. The audience. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got to know, you got to know who you your audience is you know you can't stand up there like i'm gonna make some music and y'all need to get with what i'm doing that's yeah. not what i do i watch the people and get with what they doing yeah yeah <laughs> you know and it's beautiful Man. when we can kind of come together mm -hmm. right right yeah. right how, 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 what would you recommend for an artist that wants to break in now to the southern soul uh uh southern soul music uh an artist that want to break in what would you suggest to them well, I would just suggest an artist that wants to get, it's an industry, it's a business. So this is no different than the funeral home business, the electrician business, the uh, Christmas tree manufacturing business, the making Hennessy business, it's a business. Any business yeah. that you would do, you wouldn't go in and just start trying to embalm bodies and they took no class, right? Yes, sir. Did you say making right? Hennessy business? <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it, it, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it must, it, not just drinking Hennessy, but, but. There's, you know, making Hennessy must yes, be a heck of a business because yeah. it's in every hood, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And how, that's how, right. how does it get from that's France? Was, it's, a fr yep. it's a frying French cognac. Yeah. How does it get yeah. from France to Jackson, Mississippi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And mm. why does it? So yep. learn, learn how that industry, learn your industry, man. Learn your industry so you'll be a little bit more able to, you wouldn't just get in the boxing ring with Floyd Mayweather. That's big. Right? And not that's know. Big. N yeah. nothing about boxing right yeah. oh yeah. well just what box because you think you can fight yeah okay well that's good and then you'll get in there and you'll find out if you can fight or not and as the great roger stuff. Trotman told me the last time the last thing you want to find out in the middle of a fight is whether or not you can fight yeah or not. you're right right, right. you are right you don't want to yeah. find that out in the middle yeah not fight, in the middle right? <laughs> so, so 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 learn your industry you know what i mean this is the industry and understand that there's people who came before you you dig so Study, study those who came before you, man. What is James? What did James Brown do that made him last for fifty years? Yeah. What did Michael That's Jackson big. do that so even though he's yeah. gone on, we still hear his music and you know everywhere. And you go in the mm -hmm. casino and you see Michael Jackson's picture plastered on the side of a slot machine. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know how, how how did they pull all that off? You say, oh yeah. man, the hell with all that. I just want to sing. Yeah. Well, so did they. They just wanted the same too. Yeah. It's a business. And that, that's the biggest thing that we need to learn is it's a business. Otherwise, you mess around and get a real, real hot record just coming off the top of your head. You ain't filled out no copyright form. You ain't did yeah. nothing to protect yourself. And it's probably the music business is probably the worst business of all businesses I've ever seen. Mm. Mm. You know, what I mean, the only other business I know that, that may be like the funeral home business. Yeah, because yeah. your loved one kicked the bucket. And you go in there and they put something inside of them, to put some makeup on them yeah. and lay them in a box and they make you pay thousands of dollars. For sure do, man. Good grief. And you, you ain't, only look, and, you ain't and lying there. And, yeah. and you pay all this money for this box and the box yeah. goes in the ground. Yeah. And yeah. do you really look at the no. box? No. Because yeah, you're so you're busy right. caught up in grief about your loved one. That's right. He's sure right. Right. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And I'm not knocking that business. If, if I could stand to be around them folks and put that makeup on them, I wouldn't yeah. be talking to y'all now. I'd be back there. <laughs> Come here, Mr. Johnson. You know what I mean? You know, baby, hand me that <laughs> mascara. <laughs> Give me another 10 grand. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, hey. Big okay. Rob. Big yes, Rob, you work, with a, you work with a lot of artists, man. I mean, a lot of great singers, bro. Um, mm -hmm. What is the, you know, what, what, what goes into you just bringing the best out of those artists? Man, you have to be a psychiatrist, a best friend, a brother, a disciplinary. It just depends. First of all, let me say this. There's different levels of who you work with. When you're producing a guy like Charlie Wilson, who's a masterful vocalist, you just kind of let him know where you're trying to go. And mm -hmm. he knows how to add the bells and whistles on it because he's got all those decades of experience. Yeah. When you're producing mm -hmm. Shirley Murdoch, that same goes to her, right? Then say if yeah, I'm producing yeah. an artist who nobody's ever heard of before, right? Or, or does not, this is their first time really doing it. It may take a little bit long. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It take, may take a little bit longer. And you know what I mean? And just, just trying to, the producer's job is at the end. If I do my job correctly, nobody really knows I produced the record. And uh, whoever it is that's singing the records, 
people just like, oh man, I love this record. And the artists, when they hear the final playback, hear the final record, mm -hmm. they think that, oh my God, man, I never knew I could sound that good. Wow. Yeah. You know wow. I mean? That's, yeah, that, 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 that's the object. So, you know I mean? That, that's the producer's job. You know, when you think about yeah. Thriller and Quincy Jones, yeah. and you know I mean? You know, he's behind the scenes making it all work and putting it all together. But at the end of the day, you know, Michael Jackson goes to the stratosphere because of that. Yeah. Yes. Right. You know, yes. so that means Quincy yeah. Jones did his job effectively. Yes, Dr. Dre produced Eminem and yeah. he sells millions of records, right? You yeah. know, right, right, yeah. right. So that's that's the producer's job is to bring the best out in the artist and whatever, whatever it takes, man. Sometimes it takes uh lemonade, sometimes it takes hot tea, you know, man. sometimes yeah. it takes, you know, fried chicken and prayer. You just I know, know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Yeah. I know that, I know man. The right. nuggets are dropping, man. The nuggets <laughs> are dropping, man. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big, yes, big sir. Rob, one more question I want to just ask. You know, um, Southern Soul is really taking off. Um, we have a good mutual friend, uh, uh, Prof T. I know you heard of Prof T. Oh, absolutely, uh, man. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. Their history very well. Right. He's working with a Southern Soul artist now. Um, but where do you see it going? Where do you see the future? What's next for Southern Soul? Yeah. Well, you know, man, I, I think just getting a little bit more wide stream and just and just people just, you know, just I think it's nowhere near its pinnacle, um, nowhere near its pinnacle. And, and I'm just been thankful to be kind of like one of those guys that when I first came to it, everybody was still using kind of they were still setting up live drums and all that. And, you know, I kind of brought mm -hmm. the electronic more drum machines and more, <laughs> you know, I definitely brought the auto tune and the voice box to it. Right, and right. sampling old blue songs and singing over top of them. Now we we're seeing that you know the hip hop edge is coming into it. So we look around and we see guys like Lil Boosie are working with legendaries like Sir Charles Jones. And yeah, yeah. you know we see Pokey Bears working with this guy and that and just different people, right? And so I, right. I think that I just just think it's limitless and endless. And the biggest thing is for people just to understand that this is that same good old music mm -hmm. that your mom and daddy listened to. Mama put it on on Saturday morning. Tyrone mm -hmm. Davis, you know, mm -hmm. turn back mm -hmm. the hands of time. Yeah, or, yes, sir. Can I change yeah. my mind? Yes, sir. Or like I say, Mar Marvin Seeks. Yeah. Or, you know, Denise LaSalle. All, all these, these, this is still the same kind of genre of music. It's kind of, it's kind of mm -hmm. growing. But then at the same time, I don't know if the people who love it the most, they don't necessarily, they don't want anything new. It's like you guys like hot sauce. Mm -hmm. And you're not interested in most new and crude flavor of hot sauce. Sure ain't, sure ain't. No. You know, when they put when they put their, when they put them three pieces of catfish in front of you, Man. you say, give me some hot sauce. Yeah. You want what you want that thing to be quality like it always has That's been. That's right. That's right. So yeah. that would be the main thing I say is let's just keep it quality like it's always been, instead of so much pushing people say, Well, that's old thinking. I think we should use technology to tell people about what we're doing. But at the same time, I think we should keep it kind of to its roots, because if we change too much of the roots, Southern Soul and reggae music are the kind of the same thing. If you change reggae mm -hmm. and you take the basic elements mm -hmm. out of reggae, yeah, yeah. it's no longer reggae. It might be something else, yeah, but it's not reggae because reggae has a certain formula. Yeah. You know, it has right. a certain formula and that's, that's the same thing stuff. with Southern Soul. And for the new upcoming artists, I would say learn the culture yeah. and respect the culture. Mm. That's good, man. Johnny That's Taylor good. And what Marvin yeah. Six and them did yeah. for us, man. Because them guys, they started, they couldn't even pee in a white folks' gas station. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So respect right. that. Respect yeah. the fact that those who came before you have tried to make it a little bit better. Yeah. Right, right. That's that's important. Yeah. Very important, Big Rob. I'm glad you made that point. Uh, and to that point, you know, uh, let's talk about a little bit of quartet music. Gospel okay. quartet. Yes, sir. Um, Instead of our big quartet heads, we love it. Big um, time. Yeah. Give us your thoughts, man, because I think I've seen gospel music going a whole nother direction um, and more into the praise and worship. Um, do you think that quartet music will rise to the, you know, where it was uh, years ago? I don't I don't necessarily know if it will rise where it was years ago in its original form. Let me say it's, it's quartet music and soul blues music is the same thing. Matter same fact, thing. Matter, 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 matter of fact, a lot of guys is playing quartet on Sunday morning was over there playing Saturday night. Yeah. With the same Absolutely. with the same suit on. You know what <laughs> I mean? So uh it, it, it's kind of similar, but, yeah, but but the biggest thing is the culture behind it. 
yeah. right? Yeah, the biggest right. thing is knowing where it came from. When those guys first started out, the Swannies and all those people, Pilgrim, yeah. Jubilees, Robert yes, Blair, the Violinaires, yes, when sir. all those guys first started out, right? Praise God. The reason why they didn't have all the synthesizers and all that stuff is because they couldn't afford that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So mm. there was a certain sound that became popular with the quartet. Yeah. Now that mm -hmm. we have it, are we keeping the feeling like I'm an old school gospel music lover? I think Aretha Franklin, Aretha Franklin, Amazing Grace, for me, that's my quintessential album, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So with that being said, the question is, there's new people making new music all day long. Yeah. Is it respecting the culture and does it have the feeling on it? Does it have the anointing on it? That's good. Mm. Because that's we good. know the old stuff had the anointing on it. What, yeah, what do I mean by that? You know, when you put it on and you're going, you're going through something today and you're like, man, I got to go over here and listen to man, the Mike yep. Clouds. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I, got, I, I, yep. I got to go over here and, and put on James Cleveland. You know yes, what I mean? Sir. I got to go right, over here and right. put this stuff on. Like, yeah. you know, we're making all these pretty records sometimes. Yeah. Those pretty records. Yeah, that's what I say, too. Right? Yep. With yep. all those beautiful words and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. But is the anointing there? Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. You're hitting it. You know, it's Man. the same yeah. thing with wow. funk. You know, funk yeah. music. All the yep. music. Music is, music is something that works best when people can feel it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. sure, right. So, so, so we got so we got to make sure that we keep the feeling in there. And you can't fake the funk, as they say. You can't fake the feeling. No, you can't. Mm -mm. You can't. You, you can't fake it. Okay. Nope. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't fake it. So, you know, if it's real, it's real. And so and that's just what it is. So we can use technology and our benefit yeah. to push, you know, get it out to more people and more ways to spread the knowledge, but we got to still keep the fit. It goes back to grandmama's cornbread. <laughs> you know what I mean? One cup of flour, one cup of cornmeal, got to have a little bacon powder in there. You understand what I'm saying? There's a specific formula. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Right? That's There's so a specific right. formula, and you got to stick with that formula, and because you come along and say, well, man, I think I'm going to put green beans in my cornbread. <laughs> Hey man, it might work, but you know where I come from, we eat green beans with our cornbread, not in the cornbread. I know that's right. Yes, Big sir. Rob. Hey yes, man, sir. Now, B I G G R B B. I knew I was called fantastic. If I've entertained you guys, please go somewhere and download my music. It's available at CD Baby, iTunes, Amazon. Uh, all of us, you know, where all good music is sold. We need to come by your house and drop off some CDs. We do that too. It ain't no problem. Yes, sir. Man, you hit it up. That's where we yeah. wanted that right there. Big Rob, before we let you go. Take your give time. Us a little sample. Give us a little sample of what you got, man. Give us a little sample of what, what, what we can expect to hear. You got something oh, queued man. up? Man, you got something queued you, up we can hear, man? Man, I, 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 ain't, I ain't got nothing queued up, but, you know, I, ah. I, I can I, I, I can I can tell you this story that I had, man. I got a song called uh, Please Don't Judge Me, which you were talking about the quartets. Yeah, and my yes, good sir. friend, his name is Kirk Foster. And he's a member of the uh, Five Blind Boys. Yes, sir. And, yeah. his, and his brother, uh, Deacon Sandy Foster. And they've been there. And we did a song called Please Don't Judge Me. Me and Kirk did on my album, Showtime. And the one thing I would say is that I may not be all that I want to be. But thanks be to God, y'all. Said I'm better than I used to be. That's my, that's my neighbor's dog. He sang his background for me. <laughs> Your dog is getting with you. Man, this is this this this, this has been the best interview of 2022. <laughs> Hey, hey, Rob, where, where can we see you Rob, at, man? Where can we see you yeah, at? Where can we see you at, Big Rob? Where you gonna be Hey, at, man, man? y'all's house. I'm coming over some cornbread. <laughs> no, you can you can find me on, on uh, Facebook. You can find me. It's spelled B-I-G-G-R-O-B-B. -B. Uh, make sure the guy looks like this, because, uh, you know, if he's a short, bald guy with that one ain't tube you. in his mouth, that's that not the best you. looking that's not you. show business. <laughs> So don't so so don't 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 subscribe to the fake page. Find the real page on Instagram. Yeah. You can find me at Hey Big Rob H E Y B I G G R R O B B. And if you need me to come do a show, you can call my personal booking office 818-473-9577. 818-473-9577. You know, as they say, operators standing by. No place too big or too small. We play the coliseums and the hole in the walls. I know and that's right. Sir. And, and, and gonna, gonna turn up. We'll play your backyard, the front yard, 
And you know what I mean? It's all good, baby. And we have an incredible show and uh, people love us and we got a lot of great music. Go get you some Big Rob. Yes, sir. Big Rob. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. Big Rob. Thank, thank, man, thank you guys, man. Thank, 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 thank you for having me, man. And uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's all good. Man, y'all go out and get that. Download that. Uh, stream it. Uh, get his new single. And get the album, man. Make sure y'all yep. get, get it. Y'all gave yes, y'all the platform. Yep. Support go and that get Southern it. Soul, y'all. Yeah. Support that Southern Soul. Man, uh, come, yeah. come, heck with Southern. Come get you some grown folks music. There you grown go. That's music. it. That's it. That's it. Yes, sir. Yep. If you got some gray in your beard, you're over 25 or 30 years old. <laughs> You got baby mama drama, and you got spanked with an electric cord or extension cord or something. Uh, you know what I mean? Then come on over there and get you some of that music. And if yes. you grew up in the hood with no daddy and no mama, then come get you something for music. That's and it. If you got That's hot it. sauce in your refrigerator, come get you some music. Fellas, That's it. I'm 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 there and go cook my wife some dinner. You know what we having today? Catfish. Say what you having? What you having? Hey man, actually we are having catfish, and I'm gonna bake her a little salmon. Yeah. And make her yeah. and and yeah and 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 make her a side of green beans and cornbread. <laughs> I'm on my way, Big Rob. I'm on my way, baby. I'm coming. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll talk to you, man. Sunday. God bless y'all, man. Y'all be out. Yes, sir. Thank you, Big Rob. Sure. I love you, man. Thank you. Peace. I'm out of here. Peace, yes, sir. <laughs>